Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Slim Data Bar KPI Visual. Now, this custom visual is designed really to take up, as the name implies, less space. So it's designed to take up the smallest amount of space possible on your report. And you'll see that by its nature when we start working with it and showing you how the design functionality works. It does, of course, show a KPI value. So it's going to indicate how close you are to a target value. So you need to have an actual, a target, and ideally a maximum value that you want to display as well. So that way you can control how large the indicator displays. So that's really it. It's pretty straightforward. This one's designed by Dell Cable. Let's go ahead and walk you through how you can use the Slim Data Bar KPI visual and an example that I've cooked up for you. All right, so of course our first step is we need to bring some data in. So I'm gonna start by going up to the Get Data section and I'm gonna pull some data in from Excel. And this data source is gonna be called Territory Sales. So we'll select that. And the goal of what we're gonna do is we're going to create a KPI or an indicator that has three separate bars showing both the Far West, the North New England area, Rocky Mountain, and the Southeast Sales Territories. We're gonna have three, to, excuse me, four different indicators showing these different territories. So we'll go ahead and hit load to bring that data into the Power BI desktop and into a data model. And now that we have that loaded, we'll go ahead and go up to the marketplace up in the top section here so that we can pull in the custom visual that we wanna use. So I'm gonna select from marketplace and I'm gonna search for the Slim data bar or you can just type in Slim and you can find the Slim Data Bar KPI visual available here, and we'll go ahead and select Add to pull that into the Power BI desktop. Now with that added, we'll go ahead and select the Data Bar KPI here to bring that into our design surface, and we're gonna make this take up a little bit more real estate than that, and then we'll start to plot out our values here. Now we're gonna start off by bringing in this sales territory, so I'll select sales territory as our category, then I'll bring in the value, or sales, as our value, and you can see initially here what it does is it places every data bar as a black bar. And you'll, you'll see there's actually some configuration where you can change the way that behaves. But really, we're not done yet anyways. We need to bring in our target. So I'm going to drag and drop the target value in here. And you can see that the KPI adjusts based on that. Now, you can also uh, bring in a max. So right now, the max is going to bring through as double whatever the target is. In my scenario, I'd actually like to identify the max value because I have it in my data set. So I'm gonna drag in the max down to the max field. You can also drop in any other measures that you wanna see into the tooltip section. Again, the tooltip is whenever you hover above the visual, that's the tooltip that you're seeing right here. And you can drop other measures into the tooltips section to be able to see other values whenever you hover above. All right, so let's walk through how this one works. So you'll see, of course, you do have the format paintbrush section just like normal. And as you look at this, there's a lot of different things that you can customize in here, starting with the item section. If you go underneath the items section, you can see that you can actually change the orientation of this visual. So right now it's set to a vertical indicator. So you can kind of make this nice and compact here. You'll see it auto adjust based on the selection. But I could also make this more of a horizontally oriented visual by selecting that underneath the orientation section. And then you can kind of shift the way it views to be able to, again, not take up much space, but still be able to show the indicator here properly. Okay, so again, you can make this as small as you want, as large as you want, it auto adjusts based on the selection, and then you can change the orientation to be able to reorient it. You can also adjust the padding, so if you want to adjust the padding that there is, you can, you know, increase the padding here between each of the visuals, I might bump that up a little bit. And then you can also change the minimum width or the minimum height of the visuals as well. As you go under the category section here, you can actually adjust the categories that you see that right now is to the left of each indicator. First of all, you probably want to increase the font size of it because it's incredibly small to read here. So I'm going to bump it up to a, you know, at least, let's say, 13-point font. So you can actually read Southeast, Rocky Mountain, Far West, and New England. You can also adjust the margin on this if you wanted to. Maybe you want to lower the margin some. You can lower it by changing the value here. And you can see as I do that, that the margin is taking up far, far less space over time. Now, it is going to have an even margin. So if you have one category that has a much larger value like Rocky Mountain, that one's gonna really be what's determined by the margin, okay? You can also change the position of those categories. So if you would like to see it in somewhere other than the left, you can change it and put it on the top if you wanted to. You can see the bars adjust as you do that. You can put it on the bottom if you wanted to. I'll have to go back to the settings to do that. And you can move it to the right as well. So you have the ability to kind of change and shift wherever this is located. I'm gonna leave it on the top for this example, okay? 
Now, as we move our way down, you can see the data label section. There's quite a bit to play around with in this section. The data labels are the labels that you see here and here. So you can see what the max value is as a label, and you can also see what the actual value is as a label. And you can determine where do you want those values to be placed. You can also increase the font size of those. So I can bump up the font size of those a bit so it's a little easier to read. And again, you can also change the position. So if I want to actually see it on the bar, you can select on bar and it will appear on the bar. If you're going to do something like that, then obviously you'll probably want to change the font color. So you have the ability to do that a little bit later down here. I'm going to move and shift this back to below. I prefer to see it below. I do like the green indicator when we've met our goal. By the way, that's what the colors indicate here. If we've surpassed our target, then the indicator is going to show in green. If we have not surpassed our target, it shows in black. And if you're right on the dot, it would be, uh, sorry, it would show in red if you haven't surpassed your target. And if you're right on target, then it would actually show black. We'll, we'll show you where those color values are here in a few moments. All right, a few other things here you can do. You can actually change the things that are shown. So if I don't want to show the value, you can turn that off. Maybe you just want to show those values through a tooltip. You can certainly do that if you want to turn off the values. You can also turn off the max, which I will do in this scenario. I'm going to turn off the maximum value here. And you can also change things like the display value. So if you want to ch just change how it's displayed, maybe perhaps I want to see it where it actually shows it in thousands. I can change and select. Let me do the right one here. I can tell it that I want to see this in thousands, and then it'll say, and uh, it'll have the little K indicator at the end of it to indicate that it is in thousands. That's up to you. That's how you, however you want to format it. If you like it formatted in the none format where it shows all the values, that's up to you. I'm actually going to leave this as a thousand indicator and then we'll move our way down. Next, you'll see there's some sections in here where you can actually indicate how do you want it to appear when there's, when there's less than gap as negative. This has to do with the tooltip area. So there's several little values here that you can change and, and configure that have to do with the tooltip section. So if you turn these on or off, for example, it would change how the tooltip appears on those bottom two numbers that we're looking at. So if I were to turn this off, you'll see that the actual indicators kind of flip as far as the neg negative values in there. So it's up to you how you want to display it, but that's kind of what these do. You can change the display whether or not you want to see them as negative numbers or not. You can also tell it how do you want to deal with blank values. So you can tell it that you, if there are blank values, that you want to treat those blank values as a zero. That is up to you. You can flip that switch to determine that. A little bit lower down, you have the target, or the, excuse me, the color indicators. And underneath the color indicator section, this is where you can determine how do you want to handle the colors that are displayed. So right now you have, when it's equal to target, I think I said earlier that equal to target was black, it's actually green by default, but you can change that to any other color that you want. So maybe you want, whenever you're equal to the target, you're in the yellow, you know, that's fair enough, you've met your target, but you haven't surpassed your goal. If you're less than your target, then you're in red, and then if you're greater than your target, you're in green. You also have some default values for whenever there is no target, so if there is no target placed in your column values, then you can actually uh, make them appear as black. Now, typically, you're going to have some kind of target when you're dealing with an indicator like this, but they have actually configured this so that you can determine, if you don't have a target, how the color is shown. A little bit lower down, you see the target line. Here, you can actually change the very small dotted line that appears on the chart. For example, you might want to increase the width of that a few points. So let's make it something like three or four points. I do like it as dash, but you could make it a solid line if you really want to be able to see it a little clear. Another option, though, is you can leave it as a dotted line. If you want to see it clear, make it black so the line stands out a lot more. So I'm going to make it a black dot dotted line so it's a lot easier to actually see that. Uh, one thing you should be aware of, if you make the, the size of that line too large, then you'll see here on the Rocky Mountain region that it looks like we're right at the target mark, but we're a little bit over. So you want to be careful with how large you make that line because it may make the chart a little deceiving. Underneath the bar section, you can also change the, the colors that you see within the bar. So we talked about the green, yellow, the green, red, and black colors that's in the fill section here, but you can also change the area, the color that has uh, been left empty. So right now it's white, but I could change the fill area to something else here if you wanted to. That looks pretty terrible, but you have the option to do that. And you can also change the outline color of the visual. So for example, maybe I want to make it black so again it stands out a little more. You can do that. As we work our way down a little bit more, there's a header section you can turn on as well. Underneath the header section, this actually adds a section on the far left here that you can type, and you can type, type something like territory sales here, and it adds a header for you. That's nice and all, but you do have also this title up here, so you, you may want to choose which one of these you want to use. Do you want to use the header that's built into the tool, or do you want to use the title that's built into every visual in Power BI? Uh, that choice is up to you, but you can use the header here to kind of shift this around. 
Maybe you want to put it on the top section here, or you want to put it on the bottom, whatever whatever you want to do it. That, that's, that's up to you. You can shift this however you want. But I would kind of caution you to choose either to use the header or the title, not both. You don't really need both of those in this scenario. So if I'm going to use the header in my example here, then I would likely turn off the title so it doesn't get too confusing, and it gives me a little bit more real estate here. Now, again, you can really shift the size of this. You can kind of adjust it. The idea here is it is that it is a slim KPI, so you can actually adjust the way this is shown. You can make it incredibly small. There is a minimum size, though. Remember that, that minimum size we set up in the very beginning underneath the items section. But you do have the option to really kind of adjust this size to fit your needs and so that it doesn't take up too much real estate. I'm going to keep it up in this small little area here and leave it just like that. So that's it for the Slim Data Bar KPI visual. It's a fun little one. It's a nice one. I enjoy it quite a bit because of the capabilities that it has to take up less space. I'm a big fan. Hope you guys enjoyed this custom visual and look forward to showing you our next one in our next module. Thanks a lot.